All right, guys, welcome to one of the final sections of this uh, owner financing class where we're actually going to be talking now about negotiating and some questions that you guys can ask to incentivize the seller and push the conversation to that conversation of talking about what is it like for seller financing. Now, I always use the same equation. So I like to call this the um, Clock Brothers equation for seller financing, incentivizing the seller to actually look at this strategy so that you can make more money and cash flow to help feed your family and also take more vacations. <sighs> right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and check this out. So uh, my way of, and my style of investing is very simple. So my opinion, you should find the people which, by the way, guys, if you want to look for the best deals, if you want to look for the best property, look for people and look for problems. So we got people, and then the people, we're going to identify the problems. And from the problems, we get solutions. Solutions allow us to provide value. Value then will give us money. And in this case scenario, it's going to give us cash flow. So there's the equation. People, problems, solutions, value, cash flow. Now, the way we look for people is rather interesting. So if you were watching this uh, class on owner financing, I encourage you to check out our other resources that talk about how to find deals and how to find people. And once we find the people, then we're able to have conversations with them. We're able to ask questions. Like, why are you selling? What's going on, right? And we're going to talk about some questions. I'm going to list, up, list them off for you in this section uh, to help you better identify the problems. Now, once you identify the problems and you're genuinely listening, because a lot of negotiating guys, and here's what I think is rather interesting. You know, a lot of the classes that I've took uh, on negotiations talk about what to say. Um, but the best negotiators that I've met and the best negotiations class that I've taken talks about uh, what not to say, how to ask questions and listen and kind of retract and see what the seller or the individual you are negotiating uh, with, not against, but with, uh, see what they have to say and figure out what drives them. What are they, what are they motivated by? Why are they, what is the real reason here? And once you identify the problems, and when I say problems, I mean the real problems, we're then able to provide better solutions. So in this case scenario, the solution is what? It's owner financing. The problems may be taxes, passive income and continuing that, not being able to sell, motivated. So individuals who are dealing with tenant troubles. Um, I know eviction courts are... Uh, prime targets to for, for investors to go after uh, to find motivated sellers. The solution is owner financing. And when we're providing them the solution, we're providing them the value. For them, what is the value? The value is the passive income. It's the freedom that the seller is now able to, you know, go on vacation more often. They want, they're able to retire. They're able to enjoy more time because they have mailbox money literally coming in. And this is, in my opinion, right, selling a building, seller financing, is one of the purest forms of having passive income because you're getting money every single month without you needing to deal with the problems, right? So passive income, freedom, and also tax savings. So these are the things that you're providing for them. And because you're providing the value, you then are able to enjoy better cash flow. Kind of like how we saw with instead of 50 units, getting 100 units, right? With that previous example with you and Uncle Joe, right? Speaking at the barbecue, whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we're talking about negotiating, well, there's a list of questions that we have to ask. And in my opinion, you know, whenever I negotiate seller financing, the first 15, 20, oftentimes even 30 minutes is just me asking questions. I want to listen. I want to hear them, right? And I want to build a relationship. So that way, you know, and I've had a lot of scenarios where the individuals that I bought buildings from through seller financing, like they actually ended up being my lenders. 
they actually ended up being my investors and investing with me in, in other deals, right? In other deals that I've done, uh, especially recently. So let's go ahead and brainstorm and list off some questions. So here are the questions that I list off, right? Is why are you selling? Now, I do this in different ways. A lot of times when I first ask the question, why are you selling the first time around, they don't give me the real answer. What I want is I want the real answers to get the real problems. Once I get the real problems, then I can provide the solution that provides the value that provides me cash flow. So here's what I do, right? And here's a little negotiation slash conversational trick that I use that I haven't seen a whole lot of people teach. So I ask the question, why are you selling? And further in the conversation, what do sellers do? They hype up their building, right? Every single seller that I've met hype up their building. They talk about, oh, well, I just did the roofs on that. It's prime real estate. It's prime location. It's, um, you know, they're building the, you know, a restaurant across the street. You know, the local school, you know, they just increased five students out of a thousand students and you know the, there's right like they sellers will come up with the darnest reasons to try and hype up their property so here's what i do i use that and i use it against them. well not against them because i don't want to say that i'm negotiating against them i'm negotiating with them because i'm trying to solve their problem right i use it with them right to help them better solve their need so whenever they hype up their property i ask them again i loop it Right, so stuff like, you know, let's say that, um, so one of the most popular things that sellers say is this building is a cash cow, right? I'm sure we've all heard that before. This building is a cash cow, right? I've had a lot of, if I had a nickel for every time a seller's told me that their building is a cash cow, I'd be my own lender, right? So I always say, I always kind of refute, right? I say, okay, well, if, if this building is a cash cow, then why are you selling, right? So I'm using what they're telling me as a reason to get to the real answer of why they're selling. I want to know what they're motivated by. What are they driven by? Why are they really selling, right? Another thing is, oh, it's great location. Oh, awesome. If it's a great location, uh, follow the yellow brick road. Why are you selling, right? And let's just do one more for the heck of it, right? Another, another one that I hear from sellers all the time is, oh, it's great tenants. And I think you guys know what's going to happen, right? If there's great tenants, uh, why are you selling? So you guys kind of get the pattern, and I try and do this at least three times in the entire conversation. So I ask them first, why are you selling? And I try and do two, you know, in terms of them trying to tell me that the building is worth, you know, gold, right? And whatever answer that they bring up, it could be financial, it could be a great location, it could be great tenants, it could be great, it could be a great building. You know, I've had a lot of individuals say, uh, well, you know, I just did a lot of repairs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, oh, great, great. If you did a lot of great repairs, the building's in great condition, why are you selling? And a lot of times they may say, well, I want to retire. If I hear that R word, retire, I know that they're going to be a suitable candidate for seller financing. Why? Because, well, retirement, right? Think about it, guys. If you're retiring, if you're 65 years old and, you know, you're living for the next 30 years, do you want one large lump sum of money? Which, by the way, you may not even get all of it because of taxes. Would you rather get one lump sum of money or would you have 30 years of, mo of money coming in every single month automatically? What would you want, right? The second option is clearly safer, especially if you're making much more money throughout that span of 30 years. So I asked them the question, why are you selling? But I asked it in different ways. Another way you could structure and ask a question to uh, guide that uh, guide that answer to seller finance and guide the conversation to seller financing is what are you planning on doing with the money?
Now, if I get an answer that's anything related to more passive income, put it in the bank, If I get any of these answers or just hold on to it, right, which is kind of similar to the bank. If I get any of these answers, I know they're a suitable candidate for seller financing because, well, if they're, if they're divesting to get more passive income, well, then why not just sell it on seller financing and enjoy the passive income every single month by holding on to that note? If they're going to a bank or they're going to hold on to it, I know that they're probably gonna get no less than 2% on a CD or a savings account, right? Most CDs and savings accounts are like, what, 1%? So I'm probably very generous with that 2%. So instead of that 2%, I could say, well, why not make 4% by financing me? What are you, doing on pl what are you planning on doing with the money? Another really good question, right? Let's go ahead and do a couple more. Another question I like to ask is, well, it's a bit of a personal question, but it comes with building rapport. Do you have kids that want to get into the business? Now, the reason why I ask that question is because for a lot of times when I meet real estate entrepreneurs who own apartment complexes and or multifamily uh, buildings, you know, just based on my observation of talking to sellers, a lot of those individuals have kids that are not interested in real estate investing, and yet they still want their kids to be taken care of. So the reason why I say that is, is if they're, uh, you know, extremely old, the note passes on to the children. To, let's just say, beneficiary. I don't know if I spelled beneficiary right. Well, you guys you guys know what I'm saying, right? So, beneficiary. There we go. Okay, I think I spelled that right that time. All right, so the note passes on to the beneficiary, right? Especially if you have a seller that, you know, is 85 years old or, you know, I've actually... Um, you know, had seller financing with an owner who was actually like, he was told from the doctors that he only has like five or six months to live. So, you know, a lot of times those individuals want to make sure that their wife or their spouse and their children are taken care of. So, you know, a lot of times I ask that question because, you know, it's an emotional reason. And a lot of times the emotional reason can be uh, a bigger reason than the financial reason or the monetary reason to do a business transaction. So that's another question that I ask. Other questions that I ask, you know, without having to write it down is, you know, um, what are you looking to get out of the deal? What are some important things that you're looking to accomplish uh, with this transaction? Um, you know, what's your next step in life? You know, how long have you owned the building? What are the conditions? So the typical questions that you would ask uh, of a seller, but those three that we just covered are the primary questions that I ask to guide the question towards talking about seller financing. Now let's talk about some potential candidates, right? Now here's the bet, here's the idea, here's the truth uh, behind sellers who fit under the seller financing model. Now, here's the answer. The answer to sellers who benefit with the owner financing model is pretty much every single person that sells their building that doesn't need all cash. Now, what do I mean by that, right? What I mean by that is the terms are flexible. Right, and what do I mean by that, right? So if a seller has, currently has, you know, a lot of money. They want to retire. And 
and enjoy freedom. What do we do here, right? So they have a lot of money, which means what? A low down payment. They want to retire, which means passive income, right? So because the down payment is lower, guess what it does to the monthly payment? The monthly payment goes up. But in exchange to that low down payment, we're able to take that capital and acquire more units. We're able to take, we're able to get more bang for our buck for that dollar amount, right? Having to put all that, rather having to put all that money towards one building, right? The freedom, right? So if I'm looking at a deal like this, you know, we might get something like 5% down, right? So zero to 5% down, still a four to 5% interest rate, because you still want it to, you know, be better than the bank. Because if you're going to get a 5% interest, doing seller financing, why not just go to the bank, right? You'll get a 5% interest, interest rate from them. And do something like a 25 to 30 year AMORT, depending on how long they're gonna be alive, right? So if they're an individual in their 50s or 60s, you may wanna do a 30 year AMORT. If there's somebody in their 90s or 80s, you may wanna do a 20. So they can enjoy the passive income while they're still around. So do you guys see how depending on the situation of the seller, we could accommodate and be flexible with the terms to fit their need, right? Let's talk about another seller. Let's say they're younger. Right, actually, let me erase this. So let's say they're younger. So they still want passive income, but they want more money up front. And they value time the most, right? Because they're young, right? They want to value their time. They want to travel. They do a lot of these, these different things. Now, for individuals that want more money up front, well, guess what that means? We could do a higher down payment but in exchange for that higher down payment, we can get a lower interest rate. So if we're taking a look at this deal, we could get something like a 15 to 30% down for us to have some skin in the game. They could walk away with more money. But in this scenario, we could do something like two to 3% interest at a 30 year AMOR. So the monthly payment goes down for us, which is really good. So again, we're molding, we're interchanging the terms based on what the seller is looking for, based on the seller's needs. So it really could accommodate a lot of different people. Now, let's go ahead and throw one in the mix, right? Um, we could throw in the mix where let's say the younger individual, right, has a loan on it, right? I know a common question that I get is, well, what if they have a loan on it? Can they still sell? Right? Can they still sell, right? Absolutely, they still can, right? What they have to do in a scenario is let's say the seller has bank financing and they're giving money to the bank. And then there's you, the buyer. Now you could still sell the building or you could still buy it on seller financing. What you may have to do is the payment that you make to the seller most likely have to equal or be greater, right? So yes, there we go. Equal or be greater than the payment that you make to the bank. Now. The reason why in my career, right, in my career, I actually targeted a lot of individuals who had their building paid off. Because, well, if they had their building paid off, they don't have to worry about that, meaning that this payment could be whatever it wants. It could be 30 year, 15 year amortization. It could be, you know, big down payment, low down payment. It could be whatever they want. So it gave me more freedom to negotiate 
that with the seller. So hopefully I've given you guys a lot of things to think about. I hope you enjoyed this time uh, in this class. I want to thank you guys for watching this uh, owner financing course that uh, we here at the Quack Brothers family want to give to you as a complimentary gift. So I hope you guys learned enough about the concept of seller financing. If you have more questions, feel free to reach out to our team. But uh, thank you uh, again to Steve Hamilton. And also thank you to you for sticking around and spending this time with me. So hopefully you've learned a little bit more and gained a little bit more clarity on this concept of seller financing. Uh, what I really hope is that you're able to go out and actually use this material. But more importantly, make yourself more of an expert. I encourage you to dive into more of our resources, our program, and what we offer here at the Quack Brothers brand and the Quack Brothers family and community. So again, guys, good luck to you. I love you guys. I'm always praying for your guys' success um, as you guys are part of what we do here. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys will be able to use this and make more money, cash flow. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. I'll see you guys uh, in the next class.